I got a great Copperfield story. Oh, What's well, not a great Copperfield story, but it's like, um, <laughs> this so is... I met Magic Murray on AGT. Okay. 2010. Yeah, in 2010. Did and... you blow up off of that show? I, that really helped, yeah. Because okay. that, that season, as you know, Harry, I think we had 22 million live viewers at that time. It was season five. And it was Jackie Evanchko, Prince Poppycock. And yeah, anyways, carry on. Anyway, he was he did really well, and he went on to the semifinals. Mm -hmm. And then on the semifinals, I got a call uh, from David Copperfield. And he said, uh, Murray's on your show tonight. And I said, yeah, he's great. He goes, he's doing my trick. <laughs> he's doing my trick. Um, and I go, well, I, I, don't, I don't know. You know, it's kind of like in the comic society doing somebody, my joke he's doing my joke he's okay. doing my joke yes. you, you know i don't know anything and i go well what do you want me to do he goes well tell him he can't do it i go well i'm just a judge i'm just hired i can't i can't say anything. you know this is between you and murray did you know david before the phone call not really okay no. well he had your number somehow i mean i'm easy i'm listed and i'm gonna give up my number <laughs> pulled it out of a hat third dad joke Go did ahead. he ever did he ever confront you wait so no. he said he's doing the joke so what'd you do I didn't do anything, but but I, my my story is that David Copperfield called me and said you have to stop him, and I didn't stop him. You ended up doing well. It was an yeah, amazing well. trick. So the trick was I vanished a steam train on stage live. It was my father's steam engine that he worked on back in the old days. My whole family's railway, so I'm the only one that decided to do entertainment. Everyone else worked in the railway. 150 years, that's what they did. So Real all the live long day, all the live long day. <laughs> <laughs> like Thomas the Tank. A yeah. real steam train. Yeah, yeah. On 1922. the stage. Yeah. So it was the largest illusion ever on America's Got Talent. I think it still is. It was literally designed to fit that stage over at CBS where we were shooting at the time. And so I, uh, so I got it passed through Jason Raff, who produces the show, and everyone else. And they said, this would be great. Can you do it? I said, yeah, no problem. Now, I've never done it in my life. So, and he, he said, well, you're going to shoot in about a week. I said, I can't do it a week. I got it. You gotta give me two weeks because I don't even know where to find a train. Like, they're heavy and it's we've got a lot of things. Well, I'll put you to the second week. I said, great. This is our semifinals. So I get there and I designed the whole thing. So I needed something emotional with me because I had a pretty good life from Vancouver, Canada, and I didn't really have rags to riches stories. So I wanted that my whole story with this was that my parents worked in the railway and they wanted me to stay in the business and get a real job, retirement, and I went the other way. I was the black sheep of the family. So now this train vanish was for my father to, you know, have him yes. accept me. And he was there. He was alive at that point and got to see it live. So, but don't forget, this trick was everything on America's Got Talent, the racing thing about that show is it's done in real time. Like if mm. there's no trick photography, there's no- It was live. Yeah, it was 100% like live. Like this. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. And so I, I, was, I remember I tried the thing and I, uh, I covered the train in the parking lot and we were in their parking lots, uh, the parking spots, and it was Piers Morgan and Howie and then um, Sharon. And I was in their spots where the train was parked and we kept trying to do this trick and we could not get it right. The cloth would rip, the train was still there, all the stuff. And I thought, so I stayed, stayed in the parking lot till about 11 o'clock at night. Everyone else had left trying to get this damn cloth off this frame that I had this idea. Anyways, you go and we shoot, we should get ready to shoot. And if you ever watch this clip of me vanishing the train on stage, we got one shot to get it right. And so I do the whole build up and you see the train and I have people from the audience come up to stand behind it so they can see it's a real train. I hit it, cover the cloth, pull it off. And as I pulled off and you look back, if you know how I normally look at my face, when I look back, I was so excited to see no train there. Because man, it was, there was everything could have went wrong, which the show would have loved that too at that point when they're shooting, because you know, either suck or be great. And I turned around and thought, that's amazing. And then I turned around and Sharon Osbourne stood up and Piers and Howie didn't. And I was like, I just vanished a goddamn train in front of all these people and it worked. And I was even impressed going, man, that's amazing because I've never done it in my life ever and it worked wow. and, and so Piers uh, mentioned and he goes yeah it was okay I think our magician last uh, week did better I'm like he cut somebody in half I just vanished a goddamn and as soon as Piers said that I thought I'm not going through whatever's going on I am not going to the finals and then Sharon said some wonderful things about he, she'd never seen Copperfield before and then Howie was very nice he was like yeah it's, it's fine but I think it's somebody else's trick you know stand up for Copperfield you okay. said that yeah yeah I'm not I, going. Said, I said the same thing I <laughs> yes. wasn't insulting what I just saw but there are 
it's been has this been done by another magician? That's right. Has it been done by like David? Is this something David Copperfield would <laughs> That's do? That's right, something like that. Yeah, <laughs> I did, and I said because it's live. No, I wasn't angry because the worst thing doing the show is defend yourself because you can't win. Yeah. So I knew what. As soon as that happened, I thought, oh, something happened and I didn't know about. It. Instantly, you just know if you've done enough of these shows. So I said, I said, yeah, actually, Howie, my mentor who I grew up watching when I was seven years old, he actually vanished a train on TV, and it was a, a train outside on tracks, and it was the uh, Orient Express back in the '90s or late '80s, early '90s. And I, but this was in in a stage live, whereas obviously David's was outside on tracks. Uh, taped, you know, pre-taped, obviously. So it wasn't the same. And I would never have done a train trick if my parents weren't in the railway, you know. But that's that's where it all came from. So yes, right. that was an interesting... So uh, David situation. did do a train trick. Years ago, oh, yeah. He vanished. I thought so it was no express. one else is allowed to use a train ever no, in a track? I, I Thanks, don't Jackie. know anything. Jacqueline, I'm just asking <laughs> but questions. But that's what I said. I didn't know either. Because I say, like, how many, how many magicians like have made your card, me, up, your card appear? But wait, I'll say this, is that I know that he made the Statue of Liberty disappear. Yes. So... yeah. I did you reveal how you did that trick? No, I didn't. Should I? Do you know how he did it? <laughs> no, no, it's magic. That's insane. That was I don't cool. even know how he appeared here today. Wow. Yes, shocking. <laughs> Me neither. That's in, listen. That's incredible. But I mean, listen. I don't know no. the code of the magics. But it is kind of like this, right? Let's say you're on, like, if someone took the glove, right, and put it on your head. Yeah, and there you, was a comic doing that in England. And uh, on TV. Okay. And I actually called and I said, you know, just look at these tapes. I didn't, I, I had nothing. So okay, the, here's hold, a, here, on. hold on. Can I, can I, Jacqueline? Yeah, you can. Sorry, you sorry, can. Jacqueline. You're Jeez. the guest. Yes. I know. I'm sorry, yes. Jacqueline. I know <laughs> sorry. it's 2024 I'm, and women fuck. have a voice. I'm sorry. I know. Well, let me just get this I out. I suck. Okay. So <laughs> uh, to me, it's such a unique thing that if someone does a glove, even a mitten, I'm going to go tally. Okay. Now, stay there. What if one comic on a show does Trump? And another comic does Trump, right? Obviously, two people can do Trump amazing, right? Different takes. What about someone does a dating premise? Do you know what I mean? So to me, it would be like, what's the uniqueness? So if I saw someone else do the fucking glove, I'm like, that's Howie. Of so where do we draw the line? So where I drew the line Because he was inspired. Where, where, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, where I drew the line is I said to David, listen to this. If you think, and I was like you, I said, like, I don't really understand the code. I come from comedy. And I know that if somebody is doing something similar or we're, we're working on the same premise, the, the out of respect... I might say, I might go up to you and go, Jamie, it's my thing. That's, I'm, that's what I'm doing. And then, but I'll tell you something. Maybe you didn't hear me. Two people can come up with the same idea. Which Parallel is, thinking. Yeah, two people thinking the same thing is not, a which crazy, is true. Yeah. is not a crazy idea. And especially my contention with magic is there's five tricks. You know, sure. you, you make something appear, you make, it's all about the show around right. it. It's the story, it's the presentation. 100%. So wow, I said- magic. What? You go in on magic. I see magic every day. <laughs> I, I love magic. I love it. I'm, are you saying I'm being negative? Well, you said there's five tricks. There's five jokes. Well, appear, disappear, vanish, you know, a transposition, you know, teleport. There's only se seven things Makes you sense. do. Like yeah. the, the, like the 36 know. plots. I get that's it. That's right. Same thing. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, more how yeah. the comic presents it. Yeah. Like it was a surprise ending. I didn't think he was going to say that. Or yeah, he's being, yeah. it's just I irony. Get it. You yeah. know, he's saying something. I'm not knocking magic. I love magic. Magic yeah. wins, uh, has won uh, many yeah, seasons. Of yeah. AGT, um, th what I'm saying is, um, I didn't know the 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 their code is this, kind of the same as our code in comedy. So I, out of that respect, and David called me and he sounded really desperate. I said, I can't stop it. I'll mention it. Mm -hmm. And you did, and yeah. that's what I did on yeah, live nice. TV. I mentioned it, Very and nice I didn't mention you. it in a way so that the audience would go, "Oh fuck, that's not his." Mm -hmm. I mentioned it in a way that I asked him, "Did he?" Because he told me he did it on TV and he did it on a special. So there's nothing wrong with saying, "Hey, didn't uh, Copperfield do something?" Mm -hmm. And What's it gave him yeah. the opportunity to say what he just said. Mm -hmm. That was on a track. That yeah. was outside. This is live TV. There's no editing. What yeah. you saw, you saw. This is a very different trick. Mm -hmm. This is unique. And the audience responded to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it was great. You know, I, Howie, how did you come up with the balloon over your head, the the glove over your head? Total by way? accident. I was standing in front of an audience with absolutely nothing to do, and I carry gloves with me because I have OCD, and if I go to a public restroom, I didn't want 
want to touch anything. I pulled it out of my pocket and I pulled it over my head and I started breathing and the fingers were going up and no down. No way. Yeah, and, and, and they, they were laughing and then I popped it off my head and that was it. No way. Wow. When yes, was right. it, in your 20s? 22. No way. That's a- amazing. April, April 19th, 1977. First time ever on stage. First time I did that. And then the rest, it bought me a house. Wow. I'm very excited. Wow. And one thing led to another. And now I'm doing a podcast with my daughter. <laughs> and you're set. See, look at that, huh? And that's it. From one glove. First be, time on stage. Yeah. You literally had a hook. Isn't that crazy? By accident. Wow. Um, 